Welcome to Life Plus Plus, where we aim to add more value to life by sharing knowledge, life lessons, and combined experiences from our friends, colleagues, and associates. In each episode, we'll be talking about real life issues and things that are important to you. So if there's anything you want us to discuss, leave them in the comments section below or email us at lifeplusplus at the throwdown.com. Throwdown is T-H-A-T-H-R-O-W-D-O-W-N. This episode is brought to you by Kososhi Clothing. Welcome to episode 12, I am Lambo the Virus. And with me today, back like he never left, the legal regal eagle, the number one chef of legal pepper soup, Obi Mokeji. How you doing, bro? Thank you very much. And, and, <laughs> now, and, now, oh yeah, and now I'm not so surprised when you start that regal, legal, <laughs> eagle thing. So I've kind of got used to it. You've been and, ordained. And You've been ordained. Thank you. And it has, it has a good ring to it. You yeah. know, regal, legal, eagle. <laughs> I'll take that. The chef of legal pepper soup. You know. I was on Beat FM last week. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. You're moving you up me? in the world, I'm man. trying, you know. You're moving I'm up. I'm trying, I'm trying. Obi. This legal pepper soup will share it to the world. See of you. Where we simplify <laughs> complex legal matters yes. in a small bowl of something similar to pepper soup. <laughs> and uh, so people can understand the subjects or the areas of law. Am I just going on here? No, yeah, no, but, no, but, no. but that essentially is what it's, yeah, yeah, is yeah. What it's about. How is how is that? Is it's a new chapter in your legal legal career? So kind of, it's something I've been playing around for years. Anyway, yeah. um, I, I did have um, sort of like a program called Legal Pepper Soup on my yeah, YouTube yeah, channel on, on the firm's channel, but mm -hmm. I just never had the consistency to do it simply because I've been so busy doing other things. But yeah. this opportunity with Beat FM came up, and I thought, well, if they're going to produce it, and I'll have an anchor and a, and a presenter as well, yeah. at least I can refine it and try and get my idea out, which is really just trying to um, explain legal topics to yeah. people who are not necessarily lawyers, yeah. uh, just legal news in a way that they can sort it's of understand it. That easily, that's right, that's mm. right. Because a lot of times, you know, with legal matters, you hear people going, you know, in the case of Denin versus this, you know, <laughs> and the man put this, you know, they use complex, I haven't used any complex words you mm. know, right now, but, but you understand, it can, yeah. it can be very boring. And yeah. Law can be exciting. Or it, and it can be interesting. Uh, that's why I think there are, not why I think, that's why there are so many popular legal dramas and legal films and things like that. People, yeah. you know, courtroom dramas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, law in real life isn't like that. If you've mm. ever been to court, you know, you can sit around there for hours and mm. nothing's happening. And it's all about, you know, preliminary matters yeah. and they're arguing about points of law. And yeah. there's no, and now this is the, you know, the murder weapon, and suddenly, you know, and, the, and the court goes, Woo! you know, and there's music in the background, yeah. and it's none of that. Um, but yeah, I still want to make it, as I said, accessible to people to um, appreciate it and understand it. Yeah. How w did you get your um, law degree? Did you get it here, or did you get in partly in here? Um, I studied law in Nigeria. Uh, at the Abia State University in Uttari. Actually, it was the Imo State University of Kigwe before they created the new states. Wow. And then I... You, you've given out your age there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But, well, there's, there's no problem. Well, if, if you think about it, because I went to law school in Nigeria yeah. and I was called to the bar in 1996, so do the wow. math. Wow. I, I was called to the bar in 1996 and then I did what was called the Qualified Lawyers Transfer Test in England here. Mm and was admitted as a solicitor in England and Wales in 2003. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's exactly how I did it. But did you ever practice in Nigeria? I did for a very short period of time. My dad um, was a barrister, and so in his chambers in Abba, I did, I did practice for a, a very short period of time, I must say that. Uh, it wasn't long at all. Yeah. I quickly came to England. Yeah, I, and uh, on that topic, um, you were recently bereaved, and uh, I know how it is because yeah. I lost my dad as well. Um, it's, it's, it still feels like yesterday. Um, and we spoke about uh, the friend of mine. Uh, you oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that you just did say passed. that off air. Yeah. And I feel it's only right if we kind of dedicate this episode to, to the people we've lost. You Thank know? you. I, I do appreciate that. Yeah, my man. It's, it's, I think it's only right. Death is one of those things that is inevitable. It, it, it does occur. You don't expect it. It comes unannounced. It doesn't ask you for 
your schedule? It, it doesn't no. suddenly say, you know, what are you doing next week, Thursday? No. Are, are, are you free on Wednesday by 4 o'clock? No. It, it doesn't say that. It no. comes and announced, and no matter how prepared you think you will be, yeah. you're never prepared for nope, it. Nope. You know? um, and even if it does tell you, it doesn't leave with the pain. It, it doesn't, leaves you no. with the pain. It doesn't. I mean, even yesterday I had vivid dreams of my dad's being alive and we were chatting then, wow. and then waking up and then realizing it's all part of a dream. But to be fair, um, I was comforted during those dreams. And if I have more of them, I, then that means he's always, this with is the you. way I look at it. He's always yeah. with me. Yeah, because yeah. um, during my dreams, there, you know, there's no sadness. There's nothing like that. I was, mm. it, it, he wasn't even, you know, he hadn't even passed. He was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping it's not the first time it's happened as well. I've had a few now. Yeah. So I'm just hoping that's going to be a constant uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. So at least, you know, I, I, I'm still in touch with him and I, I believe he's around me, watching me. Yeah. He's my, you know, yeah. So sad I, note, but know, it's know, uh, one I of those know. things that you just have to deal with. And yeah. one of the things that happens, like birth, yeah. you, people are joyous, you know, oh, this person's come yeah, to the yeah, world yeah. and with death, people are sad. Um, yeah. w the only constant things in life, as they say, are death and taxes. So... <coughs> We just have to. It really is, you know. <laughs> I'm yet to meet someone. That depends on the, in the territory. It depends on the territory. What, are you trying to say they don't pay tax in Nigeria? Is that what you're trying to say? No. They do pay tax in Nigeria, yeah. but they pay, if you're a government worker, or you work for one of the main yeah, yeah. Uh, companies, yeah. um, then you pay tax. Your tax is deducted from source, I think. Yeah. But so if it's you're a selected few that pay. But if you're a self-employed <laughs> businessman, I don't know. No, I don't know. Do they pay tax? Well, I don't know. I think if you want to go to some kind of government position or get a contract, you have to do pr prepare some kind of tax return. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably just declare like you know, ten thousand yeah. naira for the year or something, something silly. Ten thousand naira. Uh, well, I don't know, a million naira. <laughs> ten thousand naira. You say what is ten thousand naira now? So that's about twenty something pounds. All right, so maybe that's too small. Yeah. But they'll dedicate, you know, you could say, you know, I'm earning, you know, a million or 100,000 naira mm. a year. No, 100,000 naira a year for people who are earning millions. I mean, is there any way the Nigerian government have to um, check what people are earning? Or is there anything in place? I wish I knew. There isn't a proper tax system. No, I wish I knew. Do you know something I, ca I came across recently? Yeah. And that's when I realized that Nigeria is in trouble. Do you know that Nigerian senators are amongst the highest paid in the whole world? They you earn, just came across that. Wait, I didn't realize it. What? Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. They earn more than something like £370,000 a what? year. This is basic salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means that they earn over £1,000 a day. Uh, One of the first things they did when they went into power was to increase their salaries. They earn more than the um, senators in America and England. Have in, you heard in of, of their allowances? Yeah, and apparently they also have a fund. So you've got the basic, the security, which is yeah, about 30 million naira a year. Yep, they've got Sorry, 30 security. million naira a month. Yeah. Then they've got allowances. Yeah. Then they've got a fund, apparently, yeah, a, a yeah, yeah. development fund mm -hmm, that they can use. Mm -hmm. So how can these people legislate on, the, uh, on, 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 <laughs> on behalf of any which of the citizens they're when not. they're clearly in it for themselves? Of course. So how can Nigeria progress, progress I, I when know. you have a system set up like that? Nah, man. It's incredible, honestly. It's only, I think, Singapore and another yeah, country. I think yeah. they're like second in the whole world. Yeah. So you'd think at least they're making the, you know, the best laws, the best legislation. Indeed, man. You know so the that is a problem. About. What? You know the people we're talking about now. So what is the solution then? The solution? Yeah. The solution, the only solution I can think of is not, is not humane. All right, so no, uh, we want humane. everything who made on yeah, this channel, yeah, Life so Plus Plus, we're yeah, all about that's positivity. The reason, yeah, exactly. All right, so. But that's the reason why I wouldn't suggest that. Those guys, are, come on, man. These, these are people who, they're, uh, uh, to say they're unscrupulous or unconscionable is a euphemism. I just, when I realize how much they earn, then I realize that there's no, there's no point because there's no way they're going to legislate on behalf of the people. What do you care? Imagine the job. A thousand pounds a day. Basic salary. That's and on right. like, um, you know, polit other political posts, sentences can be in there for, yeah. you know, terms and terms and terms. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why it seems to be a matter of life and death to get into those positions. Yeah, yeah. And when um, they suddenly get there, they, they, there's this hubris that they share where they start to look down on, our, our, on these Nigerians as if, they're just peasants. What, the lazy Nigerians? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the lazy as, they, Nigerians. As, they, as Buhari put it. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe your life will even change if you suddenly start earning a thousand pounds a day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how grounded yeah, I will be. Yeah, I, I must be honest. I mean, we've been friends for a long time. A thousand a day. I don't know. I don't know how grounded I will be if I start, suddenly start earning a thousand pounds a day for doing es essentially nothing. Because tell me what legislation they've passed. They they go there and they tell me what checks and balances are in nah, place. Man, none. Tell me anything that they've done that you can say. You know what? The you know the Nigerian government is doing really well. The legislation. Is really going well. They're you know passing laws. They're helping the people. They're, yeah. they're not in that. They're, they're not nope. at all. No, nope. not at all. So how comes they're being paid? Apparently in India, mm -hmm. I think they they're getting paid something like thirteen thousand pounds a year. Uh, England's about hundred. Uh, America's base, about hundred. Baseline for an MP is about yeah. 70, seventy. In India, no here. Okay, seventy. Uh, about seventy yeah, here. Yeah, baseline. How are these guys earning three hundred and seventy? How explain? It beats me, man. All right. So, do you remember that song by? Who sang that song again? Which way, Nigeria? Which way? Chris, which way? Sonia Kosson. Was it Sonia Kosson? Yeah, Sonia Kosson. How long ago was that song? That must have been at least 30 years. I was in primary school, I think. And I can still sing that song now. Yeah. Again, if you listen and to any... it's still any relevant. It is relevant. If you listen <laughs> to any of Fender's songs right now, yeah. it's as if he's talking about this government. The only difference is that you just take away the word military. Yeah. But it's just the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's even... Um, what's that song? The one where this guy check out... Oh, Andy. Andy, Andy, Andy check. don't check out. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tired of no water, no light. No, man, it's the same thing. That is definitely over 30 years ago. The same thing, the same thing. And that's why you have so many Nigerians till now trying to leave. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not there, am I? Yeah, of course You know, not. I do go back I'm, and again, but I live, yeah, you live, you live yeah, here. Yeah. And that's why so many places around the world, Nigerians are everywhere because yeah. it's like, I mean, do you follow um, Area Father, Charlie Boy? Uh, on Instagram, no, uh, he's, he's, he's brilliant to follow. Uh, he's fed up, and he says it at, like it is. You know, he's always, always been an advocate against bad governance. Mm. He's always uh, spoken out against it. And mm. as, as he's gotten older, as he says, I mean, why can I fear? No, I'm not yeah, fearing anybody. Yeah, so yeah. he talks his mind. Well, I've it, heard stuff about Charlie Boy. Mm. That he w worked with the government in some, some regard, some, in some way. I don't know which government that was, but this, I do know. This, what, recently? Yeah, yeah. I don't, oh, um... Oh, did he during something. the elections or something? Yeah, or something, yeah. Whatever it was, it wasn't anything major. And I think if there was anything, I think he quickly rebutted whatever suggestions, whatever aspirations, whatever aspirations, sorry, yeah. people were placing yeah. on it. Yeah. But he's been, a, as far as I'm aware, he's been a, a, you know, a big um, critic of the government, a very, very big one, and he's been vocal about it, and he's mm. been open about it, and he has something to say all the time. If mm. you follow him on, on Instagram, he's yeah. always, you know, he's really, really vocal about yeah. it. And if you take it back to uh, his song, 1990, which is so good. Uh, do you remember that oh, song? 1990. If you listen to the lyrics, <laughs> you listen, yeah, 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 yeah. If you listen to the lyrics now, it's as if he's still Was talking about this government. I go talk, 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 make them, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I go talk, make them, yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to talk it now. The <laughs> time is near. Sorry, so, forgive me for my singing. You know, I didn't. I wasn't prepared. I should have. I should have. You know, <clears throat> had some gargle, gargle some warm water, some, some and lemon, salt. and salt. Do I need salt for that? I don't yeah, know. I, think so. I should have, because my voice. Obviously, you know, I've got a, a wide range. No, no, no. You know? it's, it's I gave up my body. Like they say, music you, career. In to, music, to it's, it's subjective. So there's some people. <laughs> out there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah I'll, I'll give you that. But yeah. So that's why you have Nigerians everywhere trying to make. Um, a better life, you know, going mm. for a better life. And that goes to ev any country around the world, you see Nigerians, and sometimes resentment rises and that shows its, its face from the recent riots. Uh, riots. Is it yeah. riots? Uh, uh, yeah, in uh, South Africa. Oh. Where, do you remember that? Yeah, oh, it's still yeah, on yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you've got Nigerians who live in South Africa who really shouldn't be there yeah. if the but government had provided them the right infrastructure yep. to work yep. and create and ply their trades in Nigeria. Yep. Um, people are still dying in the deserts. They're still embarking on very, very dangerous yep. trips just to leave Nigeria. Yep. As uh, Charlie Boy said recently, I have to bring it up again, it's, uh, it's like when people say go to hell, what hell, how can hell, is, can hell be any b worse What's than Nigeria? Miss? That hell can't have, you know, hell that's, cannot be worse than Nigeria. That's sad, man. And when you have the politicians who swan around in, Riches. I mean, it's again thousand pounds a day, basic. Opulence, like honestly, you're like wondering, like what, what what's know, going on I here? Know. So, and the thing is, the, it's the 
blatant disregard these people have for, for the guys who elected them into office. They flash this opulence in, in people's faces like it's something they worked for. Well, I believe they're justified to do that, and I'll tell you why. Why? Because they bought the votes in the first place. The people who should have voted for them, okay. the people that should be listening to what policies are, this yeah. is what I can do, yeah, they're yeah. not interested in no, that. The youth not. are not interested in that. Agreed. They're, interested, they're yeah. only interested in give me some money now, yeah. and you can do what you want. So the, the elders, the, few, the, the, the people in power, yeah. are essentially stealing the future of the youth who are gladly giving it to them for a, a price. And then they turn around and complain. Wow. So you have people who are prepared to type everything they can do on Facebook and Twitter and all of this stuff. But, you know, with all these principles. Yeah. But, but when it comes to actually yeah, yeah. galvanizing themselves to do something. They won't do anything. They'll just go to the highest bidder. Uh. So, and the politicians know that. Wow. So there's this, uh, was it the last elections, the one before that? A story about a guy who came from America, he wanted to contest elections. So he thought, you know what? I'm going to do this thing the proper way. I'm going to go to the grassroots, mm. go from door to door to door to door. I'm going to connect with the masses yeah. and get my vote in, get my message understood and be elected that way. So he's, he, you know, he's come back early. Mm -hmm. He's been grinding, grinding door to door, speaking to people, telling them about change. And his opponent comes in like two days before the bloody just election. Shares bags just of shares rice. bags of rice and money. That's it. And he wins. And he wins. <laughs> so, so, I mean... How do you explain that? Wow. How do you explain that? So there has to be, it's about um, probably, it has to come through education. Definitely. It, you know, there has to be things put in place for yeah. people to understand the effects and consequences mm. of thinking so short term. You know, your bag of rice now is going to affect you and your children's future for a long time. Yeah. So you have to think over that. But... It's, I don't know. It's just it's a, it's, it's just a weird one. But it, how can it change when the senators, the people who are in you know in power, who can change it, don't want to change how it? How can they change it? No, they're, they're more interested in it. keeping their jobs yeah, and yeah, yeah. and buying properties. Yeah. I heard as well is the senators that are making land prices in Nigeria so expensive because what they're doing with the salaries, they're buying land everywhere. This this is what I heard. I heard they're buying land everywhere, everywhere. How can you compete with a guy who is earning as a basic salary? over 30,000 pounds a month. Um, do the exchange rate in, Niger, in Naira, that's about what, 450 times, how much is that? It's about 13 million, or so, something like it's that, a month, million. as a basic. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're buying land everywhere. So how can you compete? Apparently there are, there are wow. lands, th there, there's land in Ikoi, yeah. empty, just a plot of land, yeah. million dollars, yeah, a million yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, how does that work? Uh, a million Banana dollars. Banana Island, um, now. Nah, a million dollars. Like about, about, yeah, about 400, 500 million now for a plot, which is about a million pounds. For a plot of land. This yes. is before you've put anything on it. Just the bare Just plot, for the, the bare bones. So if I put like, um, if I plant corn there, yeah. will the corn become like giant be beanstalk corn? No, no is there Is there going to be diamond? Are there, is, there, is there natural resources Nothing. in the land? So if I just plant like normal corn there. If you know normal even grows there. It might not even it grow. It might not grow. So why am I paying the million pounds for again? Uh, what, the, what, 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 what is it for exactly? It's, it's, you know, Nigeria. Oh, I get it. The infrastructure, right? Not which infrastructure. Uh, surely there must be. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, man. tell it's, me what I'm missing it's, here. It's, it's, Nigerians are just, not Nigerians in general. Yeah, Nigerians in general. <laughs> <laughs> Open we're, your chest, we're too, man. <laughs> we're Nigeria. too ostentatious. We're too we're loud. We like to show. It's yeah. like this affluence, opulence, just project wealth, you know, okay. to feel like I've arrived and okay. I, this is how life should be. And if you're not like me, then you're suffering. It's, that's what they're selling. So it's the status symbol yep. or the status image yep. of I have this plot in Banana Island or I have this plot in Ikoi. I bought this plot for a million dollars. Yes. And believe it or not, in that climate, that actually m opens them to more opportunities for businesses and for people who can actually give them more money to want to interact with them. Really? So I might just go down next week and buy a plot for a million dollars. I'll, I'll come with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, just ha I just need to figure out how to get the million dollars first. Um, become a senator. How do, I how do you become a senator? I, I go. I be prepared to buy bags of rice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it not money I used to buy the bags of rice? How much be bags of rice now? Yeah. Abby, and then I'll just tell the boy, I'll just, I'll just yeah, share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you need money now because you need to share money. Of course, of course. You, so need, a money gets money. you, need, you a need a backer. backer. Yeah, uh, you need a backer. You need someone who's Okay, got. so, and that's right. So mm. the people who are actually in power yeah. are not even responsible for their own decisions. No, no, of course not. So some other guys, so they're like puppets, some yeah, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're, they're just there. I, I, to be fair, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking the other day when I was looking at a thing about one of the senators, I won't mention his name, but he was yeah. showing all his cars, you know, Bentleys. He's, he's quite I a, know a popular. Who he is. Bentleys. And I was thinking, he's that guy, I, Dino, Dino Melaya. I didn't say that. Uh, no, I, but I was, I was wondering, how, the, how could he afford all this? But yeah. when you're earning a thousand pounds a day, ah. I know, you could do that. But, but you shouldn't do that if you're, if you're ethically minded. You know, you shouldn't do that. It's not normal yeah. now for you to be rubbing things in the faces of people that you're supposed to be taking care of. You drive past these people, you see them in abject penury. Yeah. And you're still there with your Lamborghini. With, oh, my goodness. It's, it's, I, I, it's I, call, I, I call Nigeria sometimes the a land of billionaires and bad roads because, you mm. know, there's so many billionaires in Nigeria yeah. and too many bad roads. So... Yeah. They buy these Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Porsches and, and, and drive them on the most ridiculously damaged... C can we even call them roads? They're not you Just roads. call them They're way. Is it a way? It's not what way. Do call them? It's not way. What do you call them? If you say you make a way, it's a good thing. Okay, so, so what, it's, uh, what, it's, is it a thorough... Uh, like it's, a, it's a what? What, what do you call it's, it? It's you can't call uneven it. platforms. But there must be a name for... <laughs> for whatever, what? the terrain... <laughs> You know, because you see them and you wonder, how's he going to go? Why? I know. Well, it doesn't I know. make any sense. Niger it makes, it makes a, no sense. I know. Nigeria's the kind of place that when you're describing it to someone who hasn't been there, to certain places, obviously, we know there are a lot of places in Nigeria that are beautiful. But majority of the places we're talking about, yeah. there are places where you could be driving behind a guy and he gets to a pothole and he goes so low, you won't actually see the car. I've up. seen, I've seen, I've seen that happen. Yeah. I've seen that. In fact, I've seen, I've seen that happen. And he's still in it. Like it's. Yeah. Um, you ever watch the Spy Who Loves Me, James Bond? You know the submarine <laughs> car. And you're wondering how this thing gets out. Honestly, it's it's amazing, yeah. and they still get out. It's it's. Um, I know, man. It's. And the thing is, are we saying? Are we saying we deserve it? Do we well, deserve the leaders we have? At the moment, I believe yes, because we're the ones who put them in. Um, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, uh, the current president of Nigeria was the same person who overthrew a democratically elected government in 1983. Yep. And how 35 years later he's now he's the president of Nigeria? It, ma it makes me. Where are the rest of the? Um, where are the minds, the the brains we have? You know, yeah. if you go to di the diaspora, yeah. you see Nigerians are excelling everywhere. Where are these brains that should be leading Nigeria forward? Instead, we have a president who, uh, most till I think in his last re-election or the election before that, they were yeah. arguing about whether he has an, even an O-level certificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have the sharpest minds, as I said. So if we knowingly are electing these people, yeah. How, how how can you blame the complicit? Yeah, and think about this. Many of the people who are in power right now have yeah. been in power for years. They've always been inf influential in Nigerian politics, right from the sixties. And still you know, are. And still are. Yeah. Um, if you go to Shore, I think is is he detained? He's still detained. All right. He's what fifty? No, early he's, 50? F uh, he's forty-eight. Well, he's late 40s or early yeah, 50s. 48. One of them, anyway. Yeah. But he was considered as a small boy, like a yeah. young boy. Even when you look at him, yeah. even now, the way the condition of the mind, the average Nigerian yeah, is, yeah. is that he's you, young. Yeah, you seem he's, like he's, a young He's man. young. He's like a young man. He's for this type 50. of... Exactly. Yeah. But how old was Obama when he, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. was elected? Cameron, David Cameron, was 39, was elected um, leader of the Conservative Party, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, how old was Obama when he got in? How old was Bill Clinton? You know, for, these are people in their 40s. Yeah. And so, but you have people in the 70s and 80s who are still clinging on to power. Mm. Even right now, the um, most recent elections was between Buhari and Atiku. How old is Atiku? I don't even know how old he is. But so I'm what's sure happening? He's, or at least six, late These 60s. These guys should relax. They should have, we have young minds, yeah. people who can bring fresh ideas, yep. but who do not have access to the... The youth, yeah. and I'll say they don't. When I say access to youth, they have access to youth, but yeah. the youth in Nigeria, 
the money kill them now. Of course. You know, it's of about uh, you know, money for hand, back yeah, for ground. Do you course. remember that? Yeah, 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 it still applies so now. No. I think the youth have to be mobilized mm -hmm. to realize that this is affecting you. Y you know, y this is affecting you. You can't be swayed by somebody who is offering you bags of rice. Yeah. You know, yep. they, have, they have to come with a better agenda for that. Yeah, yeah. And at some point you can say, no, we don't want you. Mm. We want somebody closer to our, you know, to us who kind of understands where we're coming from. But, you know. I think it's, it's hard for someone who's hungry, someone who has nowhere to get food from, to turn down a bag of rice. That being said. Yeah. I think until we get to that point where we weigh our priorities and put what's right and what's important before what's not, yeah, we will still be at this point. Man, I don't know, because when it comes to this, the whole mentality of these Nigerians, both young and old, is being, we're being brainwashed. And one of the other things that they're using to weaponize their message so to speak and uh, of how they're indoctrinating nigerians uh, or desensitizing them from these obvious ills is religion and that is actually a good point uh, funny enough like last week i was on google maps because i was trying to look for my village on <laughs> google maps right so i was trying to look at you know to see if it was on there and see the connecting roads and all of that yeah and then i noticed that when you actually zoom into the maps, most of the landmarks yeah. in southern Nigeria, not just because I was trying to zoom in, yeah. are churches. Wow. And then you quickly realize that within a small vicinity, there are so many churches. Of course. It's like church after church after yeah, church yeah, after yeah. church. Yeah. And I was wondering, you know, you'd expect to see other types of landmarks. Was this church, that church? Yeah, yeah. And then you think, does that mean that crime is, is going down? Never. Or, 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 or is crime on the increase? Mm, it's on so, the increase. So, so what's happening with all these churches? Yeah, I mean, yeah. where, where's the... Where's the message going church, then? church in Nigeria is a business. Church in Nigeria is a business. There was um, something, you know the Dragon's Den, right? Yeah. The Nigerian version of Dragon's Den. I watched uh, one of the episodes where a guy came to pitch his business idea, and the business idea was a church. <laughs> and he, he was explaining everything, no way, the man. business plan, and no how way, way. they on. were going to get their return on investment. Return on investment in the church on Dragons. Are you serious? Niger Dragons, then. <laughs> <laughs> that is, and you know what? I don't think you're kidding. Uh -huh. Are I'm you not, serious? No, There's a course. clip of a guy who. Well, I don't. I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it because the amount of churches yeah. that are in Nigeria now, it's more than. In fact, I don't think that when religion, when Christianity was brought to Nigeria, especially the eastern part or the yeah. southern part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. that the people who brought uh, um, Christianity, the English missionaries, would understand or believe that we would take it this to far. the levels that we've taken it. Yeah. And not just that, I know um, that people are also mixing this um, religion, Christianity, with African traditional of religion. Of course. Because as I said, you know, I've had clients who have called me in the morning and said, you know, or called me in the day, you know, we have a case the next day, and they said, what is the name of the judge? We need to go and pray in the <laughs> name of the judge. I've had clients that go to the court in the morning of the trial or the hearing, yeah. and they spray holy water, and they sing, and they dance, and they light candles, and I'm thinking... Wait, I'm not, in the, in in the, the UK, in the UK, in England here. I have a client that gave me a booklet that told me the types of prayers I need to say. When I come into my office every day, I have to say a certain prayer... At, at certain positions in my office to cast away evil demons. And I was looking at this and thinking, this is a very strange type of Christianity. It's like a hybrid mm. between African traditional religion and Christianity. But, you know, we are so vulnerable. Nigerians are so vulnerable at the moment yeah. that they will take to anything. I know. Um, and I, you know why I can't blame them? It's like um, someone who's on his deathbed. I know it sounds a bit dire, a yeah. dire example, but he's on his deathbed and he's tried everything and nothing seems to work. And there's someone who's selling him this new remedy. He will try it. There's nothing else to do. I mean, wh what else are you supposed exactly. to do? I mean, it, it gives you hope. It yeah. gives you 
And remember, with the hope, you have to have faith. So even yes. if things are not working, yeah. have faith. You have to believe. And you have it. hope yeah. uh, that things will get better. Yeah. Increase your tithes, you yeah. know, increase the money you give to the church. Make sure you make sure the pastor is is, is, is well done. The church is looked after. <laughs> if he's, it's, I don't know. I don't understand it myself. I know. Um, what I feel, the Niger- my description of the Nigerian pastor, the typical Nigerian pastor is, He's a, you know, the motivational speakers. Yeah. You know the kind of profound effect that their words can have on human beings. Absolutely. So imagine in my book, the description of a typical Nigerian pastor is a motivational speaker yeah. who knows the Bible, went to Bible school, and has used the Bible as uh, his weapon of indoctrination, okay. supported by the motivational Chapter speaker. Chapter verse, yeah. Yep. And the, every Sunday is to mix scripture with anodynes. Scripture with anodyne. Just make them feel good. Make them feel good. Get them hooked. Get money off of them. Justify it with a verse in the Bible. This is the verse I'll always continue to just pump in their heads to make sure they're dropping money and they keep coming in. Well, I knew that churches were a business. I remember, again... Not all is, churches. Well... Not to me, not all churches. <laughs> Two different levels, I yeah, guess. Yeah. But I, I remember one uh, client I had many years ago told me, oh, you speak so well. You should come and join my church and be a pastor. I thought, me, because, because I... Because you speak so yeah, well. Yeah, not that... You know, he didn't ask me if I knew anything about the Bible, if I knew any scriptures or if your heart or anything. Was or heart was no, it or if you I even believed this. And that was the first time he had a church up in Wembley. I can say Wembley because many years ago. And it's the first time I actually went to the behind the scenes of a church. And I went up, and then he had this office, and it just looked like a proper, like a normal office. And he sat with his wife, the ministries, it was the ministries, and it was named after himself. Wow. And that's one of the first times I was like, like behind, that's the first time I've actually been, in, you know, behind the scenes. And it just seemed like a business. He named at it the after time. himself. Yeah, 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 because obviously he's personally anointed, because God speaks to, apparently, to people. Well, why am I surprised? They do, they do that a lot. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, yeah. You, 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 you don't need to call. Yeah, names, yeah, yeah. I, did, I, did, I wanted to for a minute. Yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. I, 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 I mean. thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, they do that. But no, one, no one can sue me because I'm saying what's in public they, domain. They so. don't have me as a lawyer. Yes, so yes. About, yeah, you know what I'm saying the legal, legal. legal. That's what we're saying. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Representing for me and for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, the church. All right. So as I said, uh, we're talking about religion, right? Yeah, yeah. So I read an article as well about in, I think it's in Dagenham, somewhere in East London. Yeah. They are stopping Nigerians specifically from buying or <laughs> trying to get long leases of warehouses. Because <laughs> what's happening is Nigerians are taking over these warehouses and springing up, not one church, you know, it's like three churches in the same place. And, you know, so imagine the people, the British, British missionaries who brought us to religion and said, no, no. Another story, do you remember the story about the guy who was preaching loud in here? a uh, Nigerian guy who was preaching and police, some t- two police officers went up to him and said, look, you're causing a public disturbance. And he said, no, because, the, the, you know, hellfire and this and that and Jesus is Lord and, and he will continue to mm. preach. And then they tell him, these, these police officers, yeah. stop, stop preaching or we will arrest you. And they eventually arrest him for disturbing the peace. And I just thought, that's really... Wow. Is the word ironic? I don't know, because, you know... The people that brought gave us religion are saying that we are disturbing yeah, the public. We don't want it. We don't want it. I don't know, but mm. there you go. Nigerians are very, very. We need because our leaders have failed us, because our politicians have failed us. We have to run somewhere for absolutely run for, for, run for comfort. Yeah, run for comfort, and yeah. there will always be success stories. There will always be somebody who started attending the church because because this is what happens as well. Somebody will attend the church yeah. and maybe become successful. And, and everybody will go the, in as droves. The, as yeah, the archetype. That's right. It's a bit like people who buy tickets for the lottery. Yeah. They'll always feed you the stories about the person who's won it. And yeah. you think, oh, this might be you. Yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be you. It's yeah. never going to be you. Well, the odds are s- stacked against you. But yeah. you buy it every week and spend your money every week on the hope that it's, go- it's going to pay returns. Yeah. And the only reason why it hasn't worked is because you haven't, you haven't had given enough faith. Enough. Yeah, I, you know, you haven't had enough yeah. hope. You haven't been pure yeah. enough. You haven't yeah. really cleansed yeah. your soul. It's you always your fault. Yeah, of course it is. And if anything goes your way, that's yeah. right. That's even from your own back, the pastor or the church will take the credit. So if you apply for a job and you get it through your own merits, it's the pastor. You run straight to the pastor to thank him, and he says yes. I don't know. It's it's um. Wow. 
I didn't know we were going to talk about religion because if I did, I'd have prepared myself very well and brought a likewise a, a, and explain we're exactly talking, what I think about it? that. Well, yeah. it is, yeah. yeah, it is. But I think with good leadership, with good politicians, um, with good education. But how do you get through? How do you how do you get to the good politicians and the good leadership without the good education of our youth, which we just talked about yeah, earlier? Education, I feel, is 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 the prerequisite. It has to be. It has to be. You have to be. You have to know what it is you're trying to save someone from before you can save that person. With bags of rice, of course. Definitely. I don't, I don't think bags of rice. Uh, bags that's, of a, rice. that's a buffer. That's a given, isn't we it? We use that as a buffer. If you're if you're if you're educated and giving some jollof, and in fact, if you no no no, is it cooked jollof? No, you want to give it bag, raw, bags raw, raw bags because of rice, jollof yeah. rice will go off. Yeah, With yeah, bags yeah, you can store yeah, it. Yeah. Bags of rice yeah, means yeah, yeah. you're you're going to be at least fed. Yeah, for, for tubers, some tubers of yam. Tubers of yam. Yeah, yam, yeah. yam and rice. Yam, rice, yeah. yeah palm you, oil. So then you're good to go. Palm oil. Some onions. That's it. To the pepper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're going to say pepper soup now. <laughs> A little good pepper soup. A little soup. pepper soup. There you go. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But the, in uh, we can't lose hope. No, um, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. If you give up hope, you might as well just, you know, kick the bucket. Yeah. The, we can't keep the bucket. You've got to. Um, Nigerians are known for their resilience, for their hard work and determination. Mm. Uh, Fela said in that song, "Suffering and Smiling." We're used to smiling, even though we're suffering. But I think that song is so pertinent that trait to what has we're worked, about It's now. worked against us, isn't it? It is because no matter what is done, we just smile. We smile and we put up with it, and just you know say things will be better and then we go to church on Sunday and we pray for you know for the Porsche and the I don't think when we're praying we're actually praying for just you know I think we're praying for Porsches yeah, and private jets yeah we're praying jets. for flamboyance yeah yeah that's it yeah man it's it's sad it's painful especially you know because it's like not saying it, it, it is exactly but it's like there's no hope in sight well there is hope there, um, well, there is hope. Obviously. There is hope. There has to be hope. There has to be. We, we, like you said a moment ago, we can't. Uh, it's like you've given up then. And you can't give up. No, how <laughs> you can you give up? up yeah, you've got to keep on. We have to kick these people out, man. You've you got to keep it moving. We need, we need more people who, with integrity, more principled human beings to actually start to get involved in politics. Yeah, but how will they but get Nigerian in? Nigerian politics is dead. Yeah, of course. And how will they get in? Nobody wants to hear that. I just told you about the hmm. the story about the guy who wanted to, you know, educate the, the, the voters and talk about. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. the other politician turns <laughs> up with bags, <laughs> with bags of rice. Of rice nobody nobody really wants to. Yeah, that's true. So it's it's one of those ones where you just hope that with time hmm. and exposure to ideas and people. I, I, I do like what Shora has done anyway. But to allow I'm people to, to, like to, guy, to try and I like his courage. To, to try and think yeah. away from the mindset that we have at the moment. I mean, yeah. come on, these guys have been in power since the sixties. You know, Buhari, what thirty-five years ago, forty years ago? Am I still there now? All right, there you go. That's crazy, man. Who would you, who would you vote for if you had Shore? Yeah, you had. Fela Durute. Yeah. You had, um, I'm not calling any of the irrelevant old old timers. And what's the Kingsley Moalu? Okay. If you were presented with those three, who would you go for? I don't know. I'd probably just close my eyes and just pick anyone. You know why? Because I know that it would demonstrate, or I believe it would demonstrate a change of the guard. It would be fresh ideas, I think. You don't have to be political with the answer. I've seen I'm not being do political. You have, do you have I don't, a, do don't, don't really know. No. Well, favorite? Alistair, maybe because he's, because he's got a bigger profile to me. Alistair. Uh, sorry, um, Shore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same here. Um, but I don't really, I don't know. I, I just wouldn't want to vote for any of the old guard at yeah, all. Yeah, you know? So yeah, it's here. a bit like when Donald Trump got into power, was anybody but Harry, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, if Hillary ran against anybody, she would have lost, yeah, I think. Yeah. So it's like anybody but the old guard. Yeah, you know, let's yeah. have, we need a fresh start. We need, we need a fresh start. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I I agree. There's something about about the guy. No one's perfect, but of all the three, I feel he has more more grit to him. I don't know. And I've you never. you need that grit in in Nigeria. Nigeria is not a place where it, you 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 can be polished and survive. 
you need a bit of grit to you, a bit of ruggedness to, to your character and to your approach. So have you met him personally? Do you know him? How do you know him? How, how do you know he has his grit? Oh, Do the fact that he stayed in Nigeria to organize no, his revolution. No, not just now. that. It's, I, I followed the guy for, for a bit because he was in Unilag as well. All right. Yeah, he was... Um, you went to Unilag, Yeah, right? I went to Unilag. Um, I, I've seen what he's done, you know, from that time till now, and he's been consistent with his message. And that in itself is mm. very admirable. Someone who's been consistent for over three decades with the same message in the same position. Yes. That's a character worth emulating, man. You know, and you don't really see that. That's the reason why this guy, I'm not sure if I, if I should mention his name. This guy who, uh, today he's on this side. Tomorrow he's talking against the side he was supporting. Are you talking before. about Nigerian politician? Yes. You isn't, know the it, guy. isn't this all of them? You don't, I don't know. Know. Yeah, but it's probably this guy, all of them now. No, he's, Didn't dude. he used to be a governor as well? Well, I know one that governor. used to be a governor of, of a state that I, I'm no, aware of. No, he wasn't a governor. All politicians he wasn't like a governor. that, especially he was in Nigeria. A, was he a governor? He was, um, the, he was a minister. Okay, but m majority of Nigerians are like that. I'm sorry. They go from the ruling, they just they defect and they yeah, defect yeah, yeah. and they defect. For personal interest, they yeah. want to re retain power. It's got nothing to do with the people or you know how do we resolve the problem that yeah, is Nigeria. Yeah. It's all about selfish interest. That's yeah. why somebody will go from one party to the other, to the other, to yeah. the other. It's, yeah. it's as simple as that. So when you say, I must know the person, I'm, I'm just reminding you that <laughs> it's more people, than one. Because, like, you know. <laughs> okay, you must know the people. <laughs> I know people, but come on, man. I know, I know. Oh, it, it, I'm not, not well-versed in, in politics. Yeah. However, I, I do know one thing that these guys have in common is their, their vaccination, their, this, their, the fact that you can't answer, so you can't talk unequivocally well most politicians most politicians like that i think uh, the good ones especially are like i like that they just they have sound bites they have a message they want to impart and yeah. then they just uh, there's a famous one there's a famous is it there's a Dim one of the is it jonathan dimbleby versus john Red redwood was it or is it michael oh, i can't remember who it was yeah. now but you know there's one clip i wish i just remembered now i should have Googled this before, yeah, yeah. but he's asking direct questions. He's, he's not just answering. Is it Michael? How they all do name? this? And he's not answering the question. He's not answering questions. He's not answering the yeah. question. He's not answering the question. He's not answering the question. So that's that's what it is. That's what uh, politics is about, I guess. But and as much as I hate to, you know, try to find one thing that's good about Nigel Farage, the reason why he won the hearts of lots of people is because he he's not scared to say what he thinks. So if you ask him what he feels on a certain issue, he'll give it to you where, you know, he'll give you his perspective. Where else this other guys, when you ask them, you will never get anything straight from them. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't accept that with Nigel Farage at all. Um, absolutely not. So, no, I'm not a politician. Well, you feel but he, he, yes, he does. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's married to a German wife and his wife speaks German. And yeah, that has nothing to do well, with Well, it does thing. because um, the rhetoric that he has been passing down mm -hmm. or that I hear is very anti-Europe, but he's married to a European. No, you're not getting what I'm saying. What I'm okay. saying is when you ask him a question, he will give you an answer. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying what, what I, I his political ideology I'm is. sure if you go through all his answers, some of them won't be... No, I, he doesn't strike me like that at all. I, I, I have to disagree with well, him. Well, you, you can disagree, but the, the fact of the matter is if you ask him a question, he gives you an answer, as opposed to the other politicians who will circumlocute around it. Mm. They'll just talk around it. They never answer. That's all I'm saying. I'm not a fan of his rhetoric. I do, I'm not a fan of his, of his political ideology. Yeah, but you're saying he's a straight shooter. He answers questions okay. where the others won't. That's all. I'm not a fan of him. I, I don't. And I'm only telling so. you what he, what he does or what he did in the past that made him win the hearts of some people because they were like, oh, he's a breath of fresh air. Why? Because you ask him something, he gives you an answer. Now, the answer he gives, that's what you're talking about. That could be questionable. That's not what I'm talking about. Just the fact that he provides you with an answer. Well, you could say the same thing for Donald Trump then. You ask Donald Trump again, he'll say, build a wall, get the Mexicans out. They're all criminals, they're rapists. He gives you answers, but he's, that's playing, not, no, that's but, not. But he's playing to the, to the right, that, which is what Farage is, is doing. It's an answer. That's not an answer, that's rhetoric. 
But Farage does the same thing. No, that's but that's not the part of Farage that I'm talking about. Right, but okay. I, I don't know. But I yeah, mean, they, it's neither here. Uh, it's there. neither. It's yeah. neither. It's, ne- it's neither here nor yeah. there. But you know, that's politics for you. Mm. Um, what you do want, though, are politicians, especially, and we're talking in the, in the Nigerian context mm-hmm. here, are politicians who can get into power and yeah. and advocate and engage meaningful change. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, when there's money allocated to build a road or to, uh, you know, undertake a a project that that project is actually completed, yeah. executed and completed. In yeah. Nigeria, what will happen is the contracts will all be signed, the money will be distributed, but there'll be no project. Yeah. They subcontract and that's, it. And subcontract that, uh, that's right, and yeah. that happens till today. Mm. Um, in other countries, you know, th- that project will be completed. Yeah. If it goes over the budget, mm-hmm. it's fine, but it will be completed. In Nigeria, it will go over the budget and mm. there's still no project to show for it. Um, those are the areas that really have to be dealt with, but with education and time yeah. and you know hopefully the internet will work in our favor um, it is to an we, extent we'll to see. a large extent it's really helped shape you know um, even political the political landscape in a lot of countries Nigeria being one as well so it is helping but uh, we, I just pray we can help a bit more in terms of educating our, our, our youth because they're the ones who can wrestle this thing, you know, wrestle power off these guys who are willing to die there, to die mm. in power. But the bad part of the entire picture is they're not educating themselves. They're only mostly on Instagram or listening to uh, this artist or the other artist, and that's all they're filling their brains with, how they're going to make money. Just, you know, and understandably so, because uh, you, when you're in hardship, you're always thinking of a way out, isn't it? That's but right. I don't know, man. I don't know. But <laughs> on a lighter note, man. I ain't got the answer, Sway. <laughs> how, Sway? <laughs> how, Sway? Yeah. Um, on a lighter note, I feel it's, it, we, we need to have hope Hold on to hope, not let these guys uh, win this battle because it's a battle between be- between good and evil, isn't it? So uh, we just have to keep um, affecting our immediate circle with conversations like this. When we keep having these conversations, it spreads. When you keep meeting like-minded people and you're discussing, solutions come out. You know, absolutely, a hundred percent. I mean. You might not be able to affect all the change immediately. Yeah. That only really comes with a, with a revolution. Yeah. But if you're able to change the hearts and minds of those of your immediate environment, mm-hmm. that will ultimately spread eventually for people to say, "Look, that's not good." Yeah. You know. But one of the things you should do is to try and change the opinions of people, your immediate environment, and yeah. that will, you know, by by bit by bit by bit change. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the only way. Yeah. There's no magic solution. Yeah. I don't think. How, which brings me to. How did you feel about that the whole z- xenophobic instance that happened in Well that's South part Africa. of it. Nigerians don't want to stay in Nigeria because it's a it's a it's a hellhole. Yeah. Um Charlie Boy said it. He said, you know, I'm not afraid to go to hell because Nigeria is oh, yeah, uh, I think you know, mentioned can, can, that. Yeah. can hell be worse than Nigeria? Yeah. Ni- you know, um I think it's misplaced aggression. Mm. One of the tricks or one of the methods that politicians use or governments use mm. when things are not going well in the country is to always blame the immigrants. Mm. It happens everywhere. Mm. You know, don't look at us. That's the, it's the immigrants that yeah. are taking your jobs. Yeah. So yeah. the South Africans look around and they see the Nigerians who are hustling, who are, some of them are doing well. And they say, and they turn their anger to them, thinking it's them that are causing them not to be, that are causing their e- economic plight, which is never the case. It's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's happened in England. Yeah. That's why you've got all these you know, draconian laws called, you know, like the Immigration Act 2014 and 2016, the hostile immigration environment yeah. that Theresa May you talk done. about that on uh, radio. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that, you know, this was, this is, again, off the back of Nigel Farage and the increase and the success of UKIP yeah. when he was uh, um, the head of UKIP. Yeah. There was a anti-immigrant resentment that was... Um, that foisted in England. And yeah. so when the Conservative Party came in, they said they would reduce immigration to the tens of thousands. And so what they did was rip up the immigration rules and, you know, seriously change it. 
And when Theresa May was the immigration minister, yeah. she said that Home she was going to, sorry, the, sorry Home yeah, yeah. the Home Secretary, yeah. she said she was going to introduce a, a hostile immigration environment. Now, if you think about what the word hostile means, it means dislike, it means, you know, um, opposed to, it's, it wasn't created, they didn't put that in, 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 in place mm -hmm. to be nice to yeah, anybody. Yeah. They did that to antagonize immigra as immigrants mm -hmm or migrants, yeah. so that they will self-deport, so they would leave. Mm. And so um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a very... Caustic. <laughs> it's, 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 been, it's been an extremely difficult experience for migrants here now. Mm. And so it was, it's been popular because the people who reside in England, British people, have always had this belief that it's the Eastern Europeans that are causing yeah. the problems, the Africans, the Asians. That's why you know they don't have jobs and mm -hmm. so on and so mm -hmm. forth, which is a rhetoric which is always used all the time. Yeah. You know, rather than look at what the government policies are, blame the immigrants. Um, so that's something that happens everywhere. I remember in Nigeria back in the time, even in Nigeria back in the early 80s, um, during some turmoil, they were saying the Ghana Moscow. Remember that? Yep. You know? Remember it. Yep. Um, so it always happens where. Yeah. When there's some we weren't violent to them, though. No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't remember that That's being part of it. the extent of killing them. No, no, that comes from deep-seated, deep-rooted yeah. um, envy, jealousy, and resentment. misplaced uh, resentment. Yeah, yep. absolutely. But if Nigeria, the infrastructures were good there, why It'd would anybody home. need to leave? Yeah, yeah true. I, I've, uh, you know, so I was surprised about the level of violence. I was as I'm well. Extremely disappointed. Yeah. I have in-laws who live in South Africa, and I worried for them. Um, I don't plan to go to South Africa at all. I, I, I did want to go, same but I, I, have no, no same I have no desire at all to go there anymore. Yeah, same um, but, well, let but, but, but there you go. That's, that's and how about the uh, swift response of uh, the Nigerian government? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we've talked about politics already, <laughs> so what... <laughs> What, no, 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 I'm what, saying that to say this. Uh, what kind of response are you expecting yeah, no, 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 from no, I'm, saying that, I'm saying that to say this. What, I, I've forgotten the guy's name. The CEO of Air Peace. Yes. Now, that's a citizen. That's the spirit of patriotism that we're talking about. Who voluntarily um, flew Nigerians back from South Africa yep. for no cost. Yep. Apparently, yes. the trip to South Africa with an with empty airplane was costing above about $30 million. All right, which he, which he spent with yeah. his own. Those are the kind of people that should be in exactly. power. Exactly. Um, because shouldn't it be Nigerian Airways uh, that goes in there and rescues? Nigerian, <laughs> Nigerian Airways nowadays you're referring to <laughs> witches, like. <laughs> what, what, on broomsticks? <laughs> Nigerian Airways. Well, it should be like, you know, Nigerian Airways flies in and rescues them. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's, again, the senators, I'm sure. They could have at least donated one or two day salary each and, and brought them home. They're not going to do that because they're too busy buying land for millions of dollars. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's the sad situation. What a shame, we're in. man. Whatever happened to be your brother's keeper? You send him to the bank. Wow. Wow. Obi, man, I see all this talk is making me. <laughs> I see, you know what? It's all right. Where'd it go, Joe? Abby? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Well, thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, man. Sh should, should I round this up now? Oh, yeah, say, up, well, this up. has been Life Plus Plus <laughs> with Lambo the Virus. This show has been sponsored by Kasoshi Clothing. Uh, if you want to send an email, you send it to thethrowdown.com. It's T H A T R O W. No, no, T R O T. Oh, wait, you finish up now. I tried R O W D O W. All right, yeah, thank you. My name is Obi Wakeji. I'm the sole principal of OJ and Slisters. And thank you for having me. All day, bro. All, All right, day. Cool. All day. Thank Watch you. out for uh, Obi's new show on Beats uh, FM London. Legal Pepper Soup. Yeah, Legal Pepper Soup. See Brilliant. you guys next week. Thank you. Peace.